You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god Remphan, figures which ye made to worship them. And I will carry you away beyond Babylon. And the star of your god Remphan. And the star of your god Remphan. And the star of your god Remphan. But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch, and Chayun your images, the star of your god which ye made to yourselves, and Chayun your images, the star of your god, and Chayun your images, the star of your god, and Chayun your images, the star of your god. The Star of David, where does that symbol come from? It's never written explicitly in the Bible itself. Is it in the Talmud? Perhaps. Is there a passage in the Bible about that or no? No. Okay. So you're not really sure exactly where that comes from? No. You got me. Is it nobody knows, <laughs> yeah, huh? I don't know. I'm not, yeah. Because I know it's called the Star of David. Yeah. Does that have anything to do with David? No, I don't think so. There must be somewhere, I'm, uh, I uh, do not remember exactly what the association was. Okay. I believe that what they call the Star of David is actually the Star of Remphan. Because when you study the Bible, you'll see that when they worshipped other gods, the Bible talks about them carrying the banner of the star of their god, Remphan. You rejected the god of the Bible. You took up for yourself the star, that's the six-point star, of your god called Rimfan or Kiyun. All these were names for Moloch, the great Baal, the great fire god, who was the devil. Beelzebub. That's right, Beelzebub. And they were shocked about this. Now, who is this star god? If they only read their old, the Old Testament, they would know this. In Amos, God said, you have taken up the star, and you've made me furious by doing that. And you have actually sacrificed your own children to the star god through the fires. They sacrificed their own children, the Jews did, to the star god. When they worshiped a false god, they had the star of Remphan as an icon and as a symbol. We never see a star of David in scripture, but the star of the false god Remphan. And so we know today that they are not worshiping the true God because the Bible says, he that denieth the son, the same hath not the father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. If the Jews do not believe on the Son, the Bible says they don't have the Father. So who do they have? Somebody else, a false god. Therefore, they're not worshiping the same God that we worship. Some people will say, oh, they worship God the Father, they just don't acknowledge Jesus. But the Bible teaches that it's impossible to worship the Father if you don't acknowledge the Son. Wow. You get back to the Masonic fraternity of Freemasonry. Yeah. Their great symbol is G. You, you'll look at the, the star on the compass, which is a stylized star of David. In fact, they have the entire star of David in many Masonic temples. Why is that? Masonry is a study of Judaism and of the Kabbalah. The Jewish Tribune newspaper on October 28, 1927, stated, Freemasonry is based on Judaism. Eliminate the teachings of Judaism from the Masonic ritual and what is left. Albert Pike, said in his book, Morals and Dogma, that the, the Kabbalah is the very basis. Without the Kabbalah, we would not have the 33 rituals of the Masonic Lodge. But the God they worship, the great architect, is Moloch, the star god. In John 8, 37, it's interesting because Jesus said this. He said, I know that ye are Abraham's seed. So he's acknowledging the fact that they are physical descendants of Abraham. He said, I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me because my word have no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, if you were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. So it's interesting because in verse 37, he acknowledged that they're Abraham's seed. He acknowledged that they're physical descendants of Abraham. But then in verse 39, he's questioning, he's saying, you know, if you were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. And he's basically saying, you're not the children of Abraham, because like we already talked about later in the passage, he says, you're of your father, the devil. So it's interesting that Jesus himself 
said that you can be a physical descendant of Abraham and be of the seed of Abraham, and he doesn't consider you a child of Abraham. There is another passage. It's in the Gospel of John. Okay. John chapter 8, verse 44, mm. where he says that the Jews are the sons of the devil. Mm. Wow. That's what he was preaching. Wow. Jesus himself taught, ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So according to the Lord Jesus Christ, he said, ye are of your father the devil. So Jesus believed that they weren't following Abraham, they weren't following Moses, they weren't following the prophets, they weren't following God. He says they're following their father the devil. That escalation is of hate crimes against Christians in Israel. In this Jerusalem church, the words Jesus is garbage was scrawled on the side wall. At the Vatican's Jerusalem headquarters, recent graffiti threatened death to Arabs and Christians and all those who hate Israel. The church believes the perpetrators are ultra-nationalist Orthodox Jews. Outside the site, believed to be both King David's tomb and the Last Supper room, they protest a rumor the building will be handed over to the Vatican. If someone will give up one inch from that tomb, they'll start a war between Jews and Christians. God would begin us. Shame on you! Shame on you! Shame on you! Shame on you! Go back to Jesus! Go to Jesus! You and you fucking Jesus can kiss my ass, okay? Go away! Screw you! Don't camera, no camera! I break it. Camera, don't care, don't take picture, okay? Please, please. You need, you need to, you need to, you can't come in here. This is, a, this is a, not your house. This is not your house. We kill Jesus with blood. This is not your land, it belongs to these families. Land, you son of a bitch! I'm gonna kill you and the Palestinians. You Nazi, you son of a shit! And for them, and for them, let's go. This is my land! God gave it to me! Fuck you! Go for and for them. Nazi! Call everyone you want! My house, this is my land. God gave it to me. And fuck you. You know, in Revelation 2 and 3, there's interesting verses which talk about them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. It's not hard to figure out who the synagogue of Satan is when you realize that there's only one religion in this world that uses synagogues Judaism. It's not hard to figure out who they are when the Bible tells us that they say they're Jews and they're not. Not everyone in this world goes around saying, I'm a Jew. People who practice Judaism say that they're Jews. You say, well, Pastor Anderson, they say they are Jews, but they really are. No, because Romans 2.28 says, for he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. The Bible says we are the circumcision, which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. So in God's eyes, they're not Jews, they're the synagogue of Satan. The Bible says in Revelation 3, 9, behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Now, why would God have to make the synagogue of Satan to know that God loved the church at Philadelphia? 
because the Jews think that God loves only them. They don't think that God loves the Gentiles in Philadelphia. And that's why God said, I'm going to make the synagogue of Satan to know that I've loved you. God loves the children of the world. Does the Talmud talk about the Jews killing Jesus? Or Vaguely, they... but Maimonides believes that the, the Jews killed him, that the Jews executed him because of certain of his doctrines and, and, and so forth. Do you believe that the Jews killed Jesus? Um, it's possible the Jews did kill Jesus. Right. So okay. if, let's say they did. All right, we, maybe he deserved to die. According, mm -hmm. Maybe he was a troublemaker. Let's assume we did. Mm -hmm. So we killed somebody. <laughs> we killed Jesus with God. Che vuoi dimostrare? Che tu sai ridare la vista ai ciechi? Io sono venuto in questo mondo per rendere la vista a quelli che sono ciechi. E per toglierla a coloro che credono di averla. Che cosa vuoi dire con questo? Che noi che siamo giusti siamo ciechi? Se voi foste ciechi, sareste senza peccato. Ma poi che dite di vedere? La vostra colpa rimane. E vedi il suo potere gli viene da Dio. Scrivi, non parlano per noi. Questo uomo è assistito dal diavolo. È un ciarlatano, un fanatico, un malfattore. Dobbiamo cacciarlo dal tempio. È un bestemmiatore, un bugiardo. Guai, guai a voi, scrivi a Parisei. Ipocriti, guai. Voi chiudete le porte del cielo davanti agli uomini. Invitati non entraste, né lasciaste entrare gli altri. Maestri del nulla! Che filtrate un'inezia e inghiottite un cammello! Guide cieche, vi prostrate davanti alle minuzie del diritto e calpestate il cuore della legge! Giustizia, misericordia, fedeltà! Voi siete ipocriti come sepolcri imbiancati! che sembrano splendidi di fuori, ma dentro pieni di ossa di morti e di putrefazione. E a voi che ponete il vostro orgoglio in questo tempio perché lo avete ornato di belle pietre, io dico che Dio lo abbandonerà e che non ne resterà pietra su pietra. La vostra è divenuta la casa della desolazione. Non è più la casa di Dio, ma della lucertola e del ragno. Serpenti, passa di vivere. Come potete sperare di sfuggire all'ira che vi sovrasta? A voi che allontanate da me i vostri figli, io dico che potrete rivedermi ancora solo il giorno in cui riuscirete a gridare benedetto colui che viene nel nome del Signore. Perché io e il Padre mio siamo una e una cosa sola.